we're going further down the hole of my strange addiction. It's a dangerous, dangerous rabbit hole, honestly, but let's see what she's up to. <laughs> Wait, the, what? Second Friday? What does this mean? <laughs> I, know, I know I'm getting distracted here, but what does that mean? Is it a new town? Is it the second Friday ever in this town? I love these small American towns, by the way. I, I really do. They're, they've got such a nice like, aesthetic to them. The Christmas capital of Virginia. What does that mean? <laughs> All their signs are so confusing. Nobody wanted to get their hands on Jude's bull semen. <laughs> Oh god, why did you have to say it like that? Oh, I'm disappointed you didn't get it. Like, oh, can I see an investment, please? Kevin claims that his range of gourmet sauces are a good example. I do. Kind of I do. They're a great example, trust me. Buy my sauces. Jim's Jam, they're called, which is confusing because my name is Kevin, but, you know, it's an inside joke. Teresa has been addicted to eating rocks for more than 20 years. 20 years? She How are you alive? Attracted. Like, not only from eating, like, rock, but surely, like, you're picking up rocks on the ground. I, I don't know you clean them like it just seems very dangerous oh my god wait where was she was just is this her job in like a furniture store or is she just okay she has a name tag at least i hope that's just a name tag and not a thing that i eat i eat air freshener <laughs> because she seems so proud of it i wouldn't be surprised imagine you're like hey, excuse me miss i just want to inquire about this sofa <laughs> Yeah, sorry, why? I actually like how it feels on my teeth when I'm crunching them up. Why? It sounds so brutal. What, what is this sweat? What is this? What, it's just, uh, I don't know. Uh, biting into really hard things is not pleasant. And she's biting into straight up rock. I'm very worried about Teresa. <laughs> she's got a little, a little pill thing full of tiny rocks. What, what is that? Would you just call that little pebbles? Like I'll take a few pebbles for the road or would it be rock candy? <laughs> I would call it rock candy. You know, you want a rock candy and then you just pull out this little, little tub of little pebbles. Get them down to an area where they can accumulate. Okay. They don't necessarily stay small. They can form concrete. And now they get to be this big. Mm -hmm. And oh. then they get to be this big. That could cause your death. I disagree, doctor. <laughs> the doctor's like, no, I'm telling you exactly what can I... I disagree. I'm going to continue eating rocks. I'm very interested what she's going to say, because so far that's kind of where it's leading me. You know, that's what I'm thinking that she's going to say. She's just going to be in complete denial. I've thought that all the rocks have passed, but just knowing how they stick together and conform into concrete, that does worry me. There so are we go. ready yes. to do anything different? Come on. Even consider anything different? I'm considering it. Uh, she's not going to do it. Okay. She was slow to even think about considering, <laughs> thinking about doing something different. She's not going to do it different. God damn. Imagine someone saying this will literally create a boulder in your stomach. <laughs> like it will actually just straight up kill you. And she's like, yummy rocks. <laughs> like, come on, do it for your kids, if not for yourself. We can only do so much for you in medicine before you do have to help yourself. The decision is yours. Must be so bizarre as a doctor and a little bit, like a little bit heartbreaking. Cause like you're going in to save people and help people. And then there's this woman who's just eating rocks and is just harming herself and her family. And she just will not listen to you, even though it's just common sense. I think my children are going to be very happy that I actually came to see the doctor. They'll be very happy when you feckin' stop eating rocks. <laughs> I'm sure they're happy you took a step, but you're going to have to take a bit of a leap here. I do want to stop eating the rocks. I'm not sure if it's going to be an overnight process, but I'm going to quit. Okay, okay she finally said it. She's cut back at her rock eating to twice a day. I still feel like that's a little bit too much rocks. I think any rocks is too much rocks. God damn it. <laughs> oh man, the top comment is making a rock candy joke. I thought I was clever. Aww, I'm sad. A cat made the same joke as me. Imagine if she accidentally tried, oh no. I was thinking of that too, but I didn't want to say it. <laughs> I was surprised by that as well. Like she's been eating them for 20 years. Like how can you even live that long? In the middle of the night and she would spray. <laughs> Imagine waking at 3 a.m. and you just hear from the other side of the bed. <laughs> oh, would you just become immune to the smell at that point? I'd like to know a little bit about your career before you came to uh, 
this new business that you've launched with your partner? Well, you see, it all began with a dream. <laughs> I opened retail and then discovered the dream was a nightmare. So I ran in front of a car <laughs> and now I'm here. <laughs> but I wouldn't know how to, how to help you bring your product further. So I'm going to graciously- Of course you don't. That's, you know, uh, feck all. What I do you guys even do? Gavin Duffy wants to understand the different ways they can be used. I mean, you just feckin' eat them, don't you? Oh, it's also quite a strong adhesive. <laughs> it can bond wood to brick. <laughs> I just see risk after risk. Okay, a bit weird. They were all complimenting it a second ago. I love your sauces. I think it's a slow burner. And for those reasons combined, I'm gonna declare myself as you for your comments. They're just going out even though they're saying it's the best comments. thing in the world. Uh, so I'm going to pass on it. What is their problem? They all said it was the best thing ever and then they just went out. <laughs> I don't think these people have any money, you know. There's Monopoly money on the table next to them. I'm out. Okay. Thank you all very much. What was the point? <laughs> He's so nice, he had a good business, you all loved it, and you're like, nah. <laughs> Sorry lads, don't have any cash. <laughs> I still have my wallet and my other pants, I'm out, I'm afraid. <laughs> I went on to the next one, it says I demoted myself from the English Dragon's Den to the Australian Shark Tank, and now I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I think we're bottom of the ladder. You see, the problem with Ireland, we're not ready for any serious weather, so. Like, we get bad weather, but it's not insanely bad, so we don't usually get snow, and we don't get, like, uh, storms that often, or hurricanes, and, well, we're just not really prepared for when we get hit by even the slightest amount of snow, so it kind of shuts down the country, and this is, uh, on the national news, where we were interviewing this lad who has this to say. Oh, God, it's death, for God, the mountains is brave and close now, right enough. Sorry, I... <laughs> He had that to say, but I don't know what it was. He said it's desperate. I don't know. <laughs> Let's keep going. Well, the demolish says we had to go. Well, anyway, we hadn't much of a choice in the matter, but... Uh, <laughs> it's, a cool, it's a cool journey to school this morning. Oh, God, you wouldn't belong getting frost, but... I mean... <laughs> It's just fantastic. He's like an 80 year old stuck in like a 14 year old's body. See, Look at that snow. I, How can you even go out up, in up, that? Up, up it's treacherous. There. It's like not even an inch of snow. Oh, no. <laughs> he's lost to me. I don't know what he's saying. Oh. <laughs> what a nice guy. <laughs> he's just having casual conversation with the news. And he's like, oh, well, thank you anyway. And he goes about his day. Let's see what, uh, what became of him because I know he was on he was on a talk show let's take a look at that from Derry Rory Max Orley yeah. oh there he is look at him go let him talk let the man speak Rory how are you oh not so bad how are you <laughs> yourself, he's fabulous that's how they all talk up where you come from is it or would you be well, I love how the host is like perplexed by this he's like is that how you all sound up there like the host is Irish too I found the gun off <laughs> I'm not sure what you said there, but I <laughs> <laughs> Even the host doesn't understand him. What's the point in bringing him on a talk show when you can't understand him? We can just rename it to a, a listen show, I guess. Wait, hold the phone. Hold on. He's got a music video with almost two million views. He's got a... My highest music video has got like a million. This guy's way better at being Irish than I am. Wait, hold on, Rory. You're getting me demonetized. <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> what the hell is happening? <laughs> this is incredibly Irish. I think we've gone down a rabbit hole and um, I think I want to come back out of it. Hey there friends, how's it going? My name is Kevin and get ready because you're about to get an overdose of cringe. We're going to watch an Irish dating show. The thing to know about Irish TV is every show is cringe. Somehow everything is just, it just makes you go, <laughs> me included by the way, I, I am involved in that. I will make you go, <laughs> Ah, all right, let's jump in. I apologize, I couldn't get this in better quality, by the way. I really, really tried, but Irish TV is just bad. <laughs> all right, so it's, it's not really available. Even the host, he's like, <laughs> but in reality, you know there was just silence. Oh, here come the girls. Okay, so the idea is they get, I don't know, a few dozen girls and they're all at a button and then, you know, they hit the button if they don't want the guy and if the guy doesn't want the girl, they go up and hit the button. It's gonna be incredibly awkward. Oh, that is music to my ears. Is it? It sounded like they were being held at gunpoint. You know, I'm very particular about what goes, my saddle goes near and what I... Put between produce. your legs. Put between yeah, legs, okay, yeah. Well, I get it. 
What? <laughs> what was that? They were talking about horse riding and then he just drops that in there. Oh, we're only three minutes in and I'm already overdosed on cringe. Okay, here comes the first man. This is gonna surprise you. Don't forget to listen to the music our boys walk on to because they chose those tunes themselves. And if you're ready, so am I. Let's bring on the boys! No, I lied to you. I have a little bit too much dignity to go on this show. <laughs> the research that you've done and how you, how you picked these six genes. If you walk into a bear and there's 100 girls in it, you don't have to be told the 99 ones you don't like. You, you know, you know the one that you do like. What? I think when you're what is he talking about? I don't understand. Is he saying that like he goes into a field and he, he can immediately spot the cow that he really likes? Is that what he's saying? Like out of a hundred cows, he'll go like, that one takes my fancy or, you know, I'm not gonna question him. Like, sorry for interrupting, keep going. If I see an animal I like, the next thing I do is- Okay, stop, <laughs> just stop, okay? Just move on to the next part, okay? Can you strip it back for me, dude, okay? Why do you keep saying stuff like this? Stop it. Inseminates into his cow to get her pregnant and hopefully produce a genetically superior offspring. <laughs> the dragons are like, uh, this sounds a bit weird. <laughs> no, dude, you two were meant to be. <laughs> I'm getting too invested in this. Oh, he's going to make his choice. He's got to pick one. Who is he going to pick? Look at that other girl defending. Like, you're not pushing this button. <laughs> you think you can get through me? God, this woman just came in to replace the other woman. She's probably disappointed. She's like, I get to be on TV for a few weeks, but she immediately gets removed from the show. I mean, she's probably happy to find her forever partner. I mean, is what I meant to say. Lads, for your date tonight, you're going somewhere that combines both worlds. That's Pound World and Carpet World. What? You're going to shift <laughs> What? Oh my god, <laughs> this show. Oh, look at him, he's looking back. He's trying to get back on the show. <laughs> Why are they doing this to her? <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> That's gonna haunt her. It's gonna keep her awake at night. <laughs> That's the sort of thing kids put up on like their TikToks or their Instagrams. <laughs> But at least that's their own doing. These people set them up for future embarrassment. That's mean. Don't go near my bag. She's just robbing her mom right in front of her and she can't stop her. Give me your money. <laughs> you're getting mugged by your daughter. Which got really out of hand and there were like seven police. Wait, you're recording this. They're underage drinking. Stop them. <laughs> Who is the cameraman? <laughs> Why aren't you intervening? You can write a few letters if you feel like it, you I'm know? Not write, no, I'm not gonna have time. Yeah. I'm not gonna have time to write any letters. And I'm not, I'm not, probably not gonna call you either. <laughs> That was so unnecessary. That was so stupid. She's the nicest woman ever. Probably not gonna call you. And then you can just see his eye kind of go over to the camera and he's like, Oh, well, I'm I'm not gonna call you guys either. I, I don't need parents. If they make me do something I don't want to do, I'll stand up for myself and I won't take it. Yeah, we'll see about that when you get to Ireland. Harry! Oh, no, you're doing it to him too! This is so unfair. He kind of deserves it though. Mum that makes me the angriest out of any anyone. Yeah, she asked me to write a letter once. I was furious. Once again, cameraman! Do something! <laughs> Don't just let them underage drink. Stop them! You were complicit in this cameraman and you set them up with those stupid cool intros. <laughs> Cameraman's a dick. No, not you. Come back. Come back. Alright, thank you. I want to hear from Mr. Pickens over here. He's not spoken once. This is how he went mad, isn't it? <laughs> She's super cool <laughs> with an attitude like that. <laughs> For the point of human contact with your parents makes you scream. I'm trying to hug and kiss you and I just palm her in the face. <laughs> Radical. I just hope I don't get sued by the entire nation of Ireland for stealing all their TV and uploading it to YouTube. But let's not think about that for now. Let's watch two middle-aged men ride into a nice song on bicycles. Oh, I feel upbeat. I can almost see them through the pixels. <laughs> okay, it's fixed. So these are our main characters. You probably can't see them right now because they're in camouflage, but you'll see them soon. Okay, that's cultural appropriation. I, maybe I should skip the little intro. Now, this is a first, Emily. The two Brenner brothers in the bed with you. Skip! Skip! Oh my god, look at that house! That's the house they're gonna be doing up? It's amazing! It's actually the house where the devil appeared and played cards. Okay, that's not as amazing. What? <laughs> Wait, can we look into this? Can you not just brush over that? It's like, the, my house is actually quite famous because it's it's the exact house that the devil appeared and was playing cards in. Anyway, let's go. You can't just gloss over that. We gotta know more. Oh my god, there's a lot of 
the info on this. <laughs> uh, let's see, ghost stories, okay. On the Irish TV show, At Your Service, the devil was discovered and released from his earthly chains. No, I made that up, sorry. <laughs> Just wanted it to be more exciting than it actually is. During a storm, a ship unexpectedly arrived at the Hook Peninsula, where the mansion was located. A young man was welcomed into the mansion, and the young man became very close. But one night, the family and the mysterious man were in the game room playing cards. In the game, each player received three cards, apart from Anne, who was only dealt two by the mystery man. A butler serving the Tottenham family at the table was just about to question the man when Anne bent down to pick another card from the floor, which she must have dropped. It is said that when Anne bent over to pick up the card, she looked beneath the table to see that the mysterious man had a cloven voice. <laughs> I was expecting this to be a, a bit more scary. It was then that Anne stood up and said to the man, you have a cloven foot. And the man went up through the roof, leaving behind a large hole in the ceiling. What was that story? Like, son of a bitch, nah, I'm in. When I hit my desk, this thing fell off and I don't know what it is. Do you think it's important? Probably be okay. <laughs> Although it feels a bit more wobbly. <laughs> oh no. The are leaving here until I get that fucking ball. Oh God. It's here. The ball is here. Thank you. He's telling me where the ball is. The, the ball. Sorry. I'm thinking of golf. God, I want to go outside again. Things are falling off my desk at an alarming rate. <laughs> what was it this time? Oh, that doesn't look good. Another one of these things, but this time it had a screw on it. <laughs> This conversation is over. Oh God, when I was under the desk looking at what was falling off, he pulled a gun on me. Shoot him, yeah, go for it. Oh, Jesus, okay. Well, that's my uh, lead gun. How am I supposed to find the bowl now? This is so bad. Like, what if those things were important and my desk is gonna fall apart? Anyway, <laughs> and that's exactly what happened here. I'm on there. Ah, ah, I'm injured. I can't record today. I don't know if you can see that or not. Hold on. It's not focusing, but I assure you there is a semi-visible mark from me hitting my hand there. So if you could like and subscribe, it would just make me feel a lot better. <laughs> I'm on the Irish Dragon's Den uh, YouTube channel and I'm just seeing their thumbnail is so much better than mine. Look how dramatic this is. <laughs> Some of them are really weird. Like, look at this one. Look at his face. <laughs> Satan has sent me to steal your invention. <laughs> <laughs> this reaction. <laughs> oh my God, their faces. Oh God, look at this. Whatever this invention is, I am assuming it causes instant orgasm. Oh, they're sending him to Cork! Fantastic, we'll take care of him. The traditional family, big on all Catholic values. Oh, very good. Mary's gonna slaughter him, I could see it in her eyes. The rules are quite straightforward. They're the Ten Commandments. Oh, John is not gonna take any shit from them. These are okay. There's no artificial color in this. Oh god, the, the other two are not gonna fit in with their kids at all. <laughs> Do a cool intro for these kids, they deserve it. Like in a nice way, not a, not a mean way. <laughs> Prince! Oh, I thought they were gonna feed any of the other kids outside. They're <laughs> like, you have to earn your place in the house. <laughs> Once, I just said, damn it, damn it, damn it. Anyway, my parents got so angry with me and they said, you have to go outside and eat your dinner with the dogs because you're speaking like an animal. They made her eat outside because she said, Fucking hell, I gotta be careful. If John and Mary see me watching this, and I've already swore, oh, I'm so, I'm so screwed. There is no such thing as a bad child. You need rules, you need guidelines. He stole that out of Pokemon. There is no such thing as a bad child. John isn't as good as he seems, I think. I reckon for this family to try and change me, they're gonna have to try pretty fucking hard. Dude, you're gonna be eating with the dogs with words like that. I like how they didn't bleep the swear word, by the way, but they blurred his mouth. <laughs> That's the important part. You don't want the deaf people lip reading that sort of thing. Wipe that down your pants. Are you sure? Yeah. They're not gonna frisk you. What? Okay. He's hiding bottles in his pants. John's gonna beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Welcome to our house. Thank you. Go on, Ed. If you don't mind, I'm just gonna give you a quick frisk to see if you have any bottles in your old pantaloons. <laughs> beat him over the head with it, probably. So, Liz, we come down here because we heard you had an encounter with the Cherokee devil, the Sukaloo. I am not. Wait, sure she actually what the saw? Hell it was. The Cherokee Devil, human. the Sukalu, Bigfoot of North Carolina. God, I'm sucking in a lot more information than I thought I was. And it stood real tall. But what I really noticed was with the eyes. Oh no! Oh like no! She's freaking me out. Okay, I gotta get more looking, prepared for this. Like I can't just. Screen. I can't. I can't do this. Hold on. Wow. I'll be right back. Okay, I feel better now. 
I mean. Once you've seen it, you have no recollection of anything that happened until you was on the interstate? No recollection. Nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't be lying. I shouldn't be laughing because it sounds, that sounds traumatic. I'm just thinking if that happened to me, like I blacked out and I, I ended up way down the road from where I was. I'd probably go to the doctor and not just go, must have been Bigfoot. <laughs> Maybe she did go to the doctor and she described that and then he was like, oh my God, it must have been Bigfoot. I got my license online. It was just a PDF. I typed in my name and printed it off. We're going to get some damn answers. I want to thank you, darling. All right, it was great meeting you. Anyway, now we're going to leave you alone in this forest where Bigfoot took over your mind and made you walk down to the river. Good luck. <laughs> and we're in here tonight to figure that out. You all right? Go after this son of a bitch. Let's go get a devil. Oh, I like that. Like, there is no talking to this the Bigfoot feller. They're gonna shoot him. <laughs> Seems a bit mean, just because he's big feet. Like, I have big feet. Oh my god, they're coming after me. Control our minds. This will be on a doubt. The most dangerous Bigfoot. Also, if they're saying that he can control their minds, guns might be a bad idea. <laughs> we just came across what I call honeysuckle domes. It's huge domes of honeysuckle. They're a perfect nest for this Bigfoot. <laughs> How does he know that? <laughs> Look, they know way more than me. I'm not gonna make fun of them. Buck's gone. Oh, sweet Jesus. He's been kidnapped by the Bigfoot. Why would they split up? Have you watched Scooby-Doo? This is a bad idea. That's a zoinks from me. Buck! Oh no. <laughs> oh wait, can I, can I see that again? That was such a face plant. Buck! <laughs> God, like that, regardless if this show is like uh, scripted or not, that was a full on face plant. That is either a severe commitment or it just was an accident. That is Oscar worthy. That's like, you know, when Leonardo DiCaprio broke the glass and he continued the scene anyway, even though he's bleeding. That's, that's like that. Irish farmer eats raw sausages. Oh, I'm interested. I regret everything. Turn it off. Stop it. Stop. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. This whole video is a mistake. I can tell already. And like, I'm 100% Irish proven by my DNA video. If I'm 100%, what are these people? <laughs> 200%? 300%? Oh, I think I found his sheep and goats. 2,000 euro for me. <laughs> Where are they? Around 22 wild goats had originally occupied... 22. He's missing 45. Okay, we found half of them. That's still a thousand euro. Euro. But in recent months, they've multiplied in numbers, roaming the roads unsupervised, <laughs> causing hazards for businesses. And it's like if this was without the video and you were like, OK, this is in America, you'd be talking like gangland violence or something like that. And then you cut into the video and you're like, no, wait, it's actually goats. Like, listen to this without the video. But in recent months, they've multiplied in numbers, roaming the roads unsupervised, <laughs> you think it's some dangerous teen gang or something. The main concern we have is health and safety because they're now... Like, uh, it is hilarious, but she actually has a point because it is dangerous to have these things running around the roads. Like, I, I have genuinely been in a position where when I was young, I was at home alone, and then I look out the window and just cows were surrounding the house, and I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> I'm just trapped in the house with cows surrounding me at every angle. An appeal has now been made to help find a permanent home for the group as a long term give them to the guy in Kerry if you can manage to actually have a conversation with him why did they bring in the dog warden for gods <laughs> That's like me. I like call up animal control. It's like, yeah, we got so many dogs out here on the road. And then they show up and there's just goats everywhere. Like, uh, these are funny looking dogs. Clare County Council is exploring options for the safe removal and relocation of the animals. In the meantime, I don't understand. Like, won't a farmer adopt them? Like, wouldn't they have a use for goats? Put up a little sign saying free goats <laughs> and just leave people take. Order. Order, Mr. Bob, the jury has found you guilty and you will be sentenced to death. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Order! Order in the court! Order! Put that aside for now. You just woke me up. Welcome. <laughs> what a pleasant way to wake up. Jeez, Brendan. <laughs> it's just like... Hello, I was in the mummy. <laughs> this is so stupid. Like, what am, what am I supposed to do with him? This is just gonna sit in my room now. 
Like, what do I do with this thing? It's just gonna be sitting here all the time. It does kind of hold the room together, though. Like, that does actually, you know, I like it. He's gonna stare at you, judging you. Well, I'll feckin' judge him back. It's the tattoos. The tattoos are here. Yeah, I'm getting my masculinity back. Um, if you need to talk to uh, Brendan Fraser, he's, uh, he's, he's that, that, that way. Hold on, I'm getting confused. He's over, uh, He's over there if you if you need him. <laughs> Chilling out in my uh, in my office just casually. I just like I like relaxing in this um in this pose. I really was affected by not being able to open that package earlier. I'm smuggling drugs. Oh, she is searching them now. Should have started doing that from day one. They wouldn't have got alcohol into your home. Harry. Yeah. Oh God, what have you found on Harry? Please. Oh. Um, That's a paddling. <laughs> Wait, he's running away. Harry, this is Ireland. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> There's only fields. Once again, the cameraman just follows him ditching school. <laughs> For God's sake. <laughs> Mary's on the prowl. She's gotten worried. That cameraman snitched for sure. I don't know. What if I can't find him at all? Well, I mean, just ring the cameraman. <laughs> ridiculous, really. It's ridiculous. <laughs> this is ridiculous, Mary. You're right. I'm looking for a 15-year-old boy, blonde hair, green uniform, St. Aidan's. See what the bank camera <laughs> He's gonna phone the police. There's some woman there looking for a 15-year-old boy. Sure ain't that illegal. Oh my god, I thought that was Mary coming in the car behind him. Gonna hit and run him. Next time, stay in school. He'll have to deal with more than just disappointment with these parents. God, what are they gonna do to him? Is the death penalty legal in court? But if that wasn't enough, Mary's just discovered the bottle of wine Emily stashed under the mat. Oh no. Oh no, and Emily was just getting on their good side. Sorry, I'll give you my full attention now, Mary. She'd be furious if she saw me on my phone. It's ridiculous. I know there's rules in this country about alcohol. I'm going to have to turn you in, Emily. <laughs> it brings us straight to the police. Well, I want you to learn from this week and, and learn that you don't need crutches like this to keep you going, love. I don't think she's using it as a crutch. <laughs> she's like 16. <laughs> this is not a typical Irish family. A typical Irish family would not pour alcohol down the drain. <laughs> Maybe they just want to have a shower and just think. Jesus, cameraman, leave her alone. She's going to the shower. <laughs> John isn't the only one ready to see a change in Harry. His mum, Julie, has written him a letter. Why did she bother? She knows he's not going to write back. Probably won't even call her. Probably not going to call you either. How art thou, our dearest Harry? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> His mom is great. Dad and I want for nothing more than for you to be happy. She's so nice. I wonder what her husband is like. I think he's legitimately not said a word. Oh, he's gonna say something? Oh no, he changed his mind. There's something right on the cusp of his lips about to come out. And then he said no, maybe later. <laughs> See you soon, my hazard kid. Oh, that's dramatic. Look at that, it's really sinking in. Oh my God, it's worked. I don't think of myself as a horrible person. Maybe they just need to communicate in letters from now on. It's like a fucking Disney movie or something. Like one instance just changes the entire character. She's telling the truth that she did drink it on the way over here and didn't drink it while she was here. Let's give her a benefit of the doubt if you've asked her about it. If she said that is the case, well then yeah. we believe her. Yeah. Well, that's very mature. I thought they were just going to beat the shit out of her, to be honest. Well, I'm convinced. Let's join their journey. And we're going after a legendary Bigfoot, the Cherokee Devil. I wasn't actually aware there were multiple Bigfoots, but this one looks scary. In fact, I think this might have been the one I was hunting too. And I'll tell you one thing the Cherokee spoke of most of all that worries me is he can read your thoughts. Oh no, he can read our thoughts as well. It's combining the worst two fears of my life. Someone knowing what's going on in here. <laughs> And, well, Bigfoot, of course. He went to the bathroom the other night and threw up. His standing crane looked like a wounded pigeon. <laughs> oh, they're having a great time. By the way, I know I have a lot of American viewers, and uh, I'm going to assume every single one of you is exactly like these people. Because this is me learning about America. And no sarcasm at all. It's coming across really well. I actually really like them so far. <laughs> they seem great. They usually don't wear any underwear. <laughs> I've been trying Oh my god, that uncomfortable smile after he said that. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. It's like, Kevin, it's time for your school photo. Okay. <laughs> Babies. <laughs> all right, let's go watch some Irish news. Last Saturday, Mikey Joe O'Shea brought his flock of Scotch sheep down from the mountain commonage ahead of lambing. 
See. Mikey is convinced over 45 sheep have been stolen. Well, there was 45 sheep missing, Mike, and the lambs, <laughs> and you're missing the sheep this con <laughs> You see what I mean? You see, this is the problem in other countries. They're trying to report on sad stuff and, like, current affairs and politics. If you just talk about feckin' sheep, well, hold on. Let's not talk about feckin' sheep, all right? Uh, no, don't quote me on that. I'm talking about... If we just talk about sheep, everyone can get behind that. And I don't mean the sheep. Stop thinking that way. Get your mind out of the gutter. Let's see what else he has to say. I'm going to translate in real time for you. Count out nice bit more, you like. I'll translate the next part. I, he's even lost me there. Hold on, let's try that again. From the, from the top, let's go. 45 sheep missing, Mike, and the lambs, and you're with the sheep. Just count, just count out a nice bit more, you like. Tim be done about you nothing. I think he's saying it's a nice bit of money and you can't do anything about it. I think. Alright, I'll do the rest. I'll translate the rest. <laughs> nice day, isn't it? My son. <laughs> no, I've honestly lost him. What does Google have to say about this? Be done about you nothing. Okay, I don't think Google knows either, but it's a better guess than me, honestly. I'm kind of impressed. Come back, come back, come back. Look, don't say come back to them. If I can't understand you, the sheep sure as hell can't understand you. Don't talk to them. In the meantime, one of the farmers is offering a 2,000 euro reward for any information Whoa. leading to the return of his sheep. Let's go get those sheep, guys. <laughs> That's good money if we split it between all two million of us. Sean McAteehig. RTE News. I'm very curious if you can understand the presenter because I, I find his accent very easy to understand. It's the farmer I'm struggling with. Do let me know if you can understand the people. Two farmers in County Kerry, Mickey Joe O'Shea and Richie Griffin, have lost over 45 sheep. They have the thickest Kerry accent imaginable. See if you can decipher what they're saying. Why are you making fun of them? What is this channel? Call on him from Kildare. Oh god. Shout it at them. I like that. Don't talk to them. Talk at them. <laughs> Jesus, he lost two already. Is that the, the way he talked? Is that it? Oh God, I can just feel the like, what do I do with my hands? You know, <laughs> you can tell he doesn't know. I just, I, I, I don't know, not for me, sorry. No worries. <laughs> it's the most Irish thing ever. It's like, ah, you're not for me. Ah, no bother. <laughs> uh, Linda, what do you think? Lights on. Ah, oh, like he has his own leather jacket. That'd work for the bike, so. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that! It's like, what do you think? How about your compliment? Oh, he has a jacket. Oh, that would hurt. Carl, what will the girls think after they take a look at this? Oh no, he's prepared something. A video. Carl will be very good with the ladies. Oh, they're all going. Oh, they're all going. They hated that picture. Yeah, he has no real shame. And uh, he doesn't leave much. Oh no! His friends are trying to be like wingmen for him and it's it's having the opposite effect. Oh no, Kyle, this is a disaster. <laughs> what are we going to do, Kyle? It's really creative, had the beer box protecting his head. I know it's tough in oxygen with the sun and all that. Oh yeah, that. of course, you need protection. But yeah. uh, wasn't keen on all the girls. Sun protection! <laughs> Uh, Dirty. <laughs> I like that someone called him out. <laughs> she was just like, oh yeah, making a joke about that he had a box over his head, like a beer box. Like, oh yeah, protection from the sun. He took it in a dirty way, because of course that's his job. And then she hits him with the... Dirty. <laughs> <laughs> the little laugh and everything. Well, obviously he's not getting enough, ladies, if he's appearing on Take Me Out. <laughs> I'm never satisfied. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh no. Why would you say that? And it looks like a good crack as well. Good crack. All right, nice one. Uh, I should, I should uh, clarify that. Good crack means like good fun. <laughs> Just so you're aware, they're not like, oh, he's a good crack. Because <laughs> that, that sounds wrong. We only got like seven minutes of the video left. Come on, wrap it up. Fix Harry next. <laughs> Our Aussie teenagers will begin their long trip home. What? But you didn't fix Harry. He's still got a bit of a troublemaker in him. He probably still has that bottle in his pants. He never took it out from day one. He's too afraid he'll get found out like she did. Yeah, uh, this is a present from Oscar Here's your piercings back. <laughs> Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> They've all been watching him, but a Jack septic guy I see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh my God, she's breaking down. They had such an impact on her. Meanwhile, Harry's gone running away again. <laughs> Where's he gone? <laughs> She's a super girl. Oh, I'll see you, I'll see. But what about Harry? <laughs> Please fill me in on what's happening with him. Good man, Harry. Have a good life. Thank you. Okay. There it's we gonna... go. A little handshake. No, but seriously, what about her piercings? <laughs> Are you going to give them back? Is John going to be wearing them as he waves them goodbye? <laughs> Thank you. 
Wait, hold on a second. Did they have a little sign up? Hold on. Welcome home, Harry. His parents are the best. Hi. <laughs> you gonna say hi to your son? Wait, I think he said something. Hold on. Hi, Harry. He said hello, Harry. Oh, that's that's really nice. Uh, I feel like all the loose ends are getting tied up. They don't have any sign up for Emily. God, way to get shown up. <laughs> I like it. It's like a surprise. Like, oh my god, she's here. <laughs> Meanwhile, the cameraman's in the living room waiting for her to open the door. They were fantastic. They were like the greatest family. They were so good. Hey, hold on now. Don't talk them up too much. Like, your, your own family might get a bit jealous. Then I decided that I didn't want them. No, hold on, hold on. You fought too to nail to keep those piercings. But John just wanted them more. He was more passionate about it. I know, appreciate what I do have, not whinge and fight with you about what I don't have. They're only being nice because the cameraman's there and he's got so much dirt on them. As soon as he leaves, they're gonna go back to normal. She's kept up horse riding and still doesn't have her face piercings. Well, that's because John never gave him back. Couldn't have put the ending better myself.